Hey everybody. Uh, we're looking at my gudgeon tank. It's soon to be my gudgeon slash t-bar tank because my uh, problematic t-bar cichlid is getting moved from the 40 gallon breeder that it's in into this 40 gallon breeder. This tank currently holds this gudgeon right here. You can see him. He's just come up out of this cave system. Uh, and that is exactly what I want to talk about. I did not build this cave system for him. I built this cave system so that when the T-Bar got into this tank, uh, the T-Bar would actually have a place to call home and do a little bit of construction work. The, the problem I'm having, well, one of the problems I'm having with the T-Bar in the other tank is he's just digging and he's digging up my plants and everything. So um, this tank's not really designed to have a fish in it digging, but yeah, I think if I can keep him around the rocks, um, I can limit where he digs and I can probably prevent him from digging up any of my plants or I can just, if need be, I can put rocks around the base of the plants so he can't get to them. Um, I'm just, I got a little more room to wiggle in this tank once I get the T-bar in here. The problem being is that I just set this up yesterday with these rocks in here. Up until then it had been just plants and sand without any cave structure at all. And it looks like the gudgeon has already taken a shine to these cave systems. In fact, he's taken to them like a duck to water. And now I'm beginning to wonder how much dispute there's going to be when the T-bar goes in the tank over who gets to live in what cave. Uh, I did put two systems in, but you can clearly see one is a little lower rent than the other. Um, and you can clearly see which one this gudgeon has laid claim to. So one thing that was suggested to me, and I had already sort of pondered this myself, was the suggestion that in addition to adding the T-bar, I should put multiple fish in at the same time. This tank's probably not going to be just the T-bar and gudgeon. It's probably going to have a small school of something. It's probably going to have some fish on the bottom. Um, so the idea that I can put multiple fish in at the same time, that way if there is any aggression from this gudgeon who feels that his home is being invaded, it'll be spread out amongst multiple fish rather than directed solely at my T-bar. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I got to thinking today, like the light bulb went off, it's been a long time since I've had a tank that I could really do anything with, so now suddenly I feel like the kid in the candy store again of what do I want to put in here and do I rush right out and buy something uh, just for the sake of putting something in here with the T-bar. That runs me into the issue of quarantine, and if I do run out and get something, you know, am I going to have to quarantine it for six weeks before I put it in here? Um... So I don't know. I don't really know what I want to do here. Today was the day I was going to start working on the T-bar and getting him out of his tank. I may still do that. Um, but if I do that, then that'll be one fish being put in here in addition to this one. So there might be issues between those two. And it'll still leave me in a position in the future, I'll say, when I do want to add something else. I'll then be introducing more fish into an established tank with established territories and you can run into problems doing that. A lot of times when you introduce fish you do want to do it in groups so that either it disperses aggression or no one fish is able to establish a territory um, and you know become territorial when you add fish later and that's what I'm concerned about is this guy getting a little too attached to this cave system. Um, so there's, there's a cost to waiting and there's a cost to, to rushing. Um, right now I'm trying to weigh out the costs. I know the kid in me wants to run right out to the local uh, fish store, you know, and get something. I've already looked at the website for my big chain pet store that's about a 15 minute drive. Um, I'm honestly considering um, a peacock eel I think would look nice in here. I've always wanted one of those, and I've never had a, even a tank that was suitable for one. And this one might do it with the sandy substrate and the lower stocking density. I could afford a slightly larger fish like that. I've also considered a polypterus, uh, sometimes called a bichir or a bichir. Um, a polypterus, I think, would get a little big. I, th I think that in the long run, I'd have to have an alternative plan for what I was going to do if I got a polypterus. So that's probably not really realistic either. Um, I've thought about coolie loaches. I did actually have somebody ask me this morning if I had any experience with them, and I was just saying, like, no, but I've always wanted one, but I've never had the tank. Well, I've got a tank now, and I could put some coolie loaches in here. 
I could also put, uh, you know, I've been considering tossing the idea around of maybe a Severum or a Convict Cichlid. Uh, I, I believe both of them could deal with my softer water and are lower on the aggression scale, so I won't be putting a really, you know, nasty fish in here with this gudgeon. So I've got some choices, and I don't really know what I want to do. I think I might just take a drive over to the fish store today. Always a bad idea when you're in the kind of mood I'm in, um, especially if you got a couple dollars in the bank, which I do at the moment. So it's very likely that I could come home with some impulse purchases, although obviously if I'm shooting a video about it before I even go over there, they're not entirely impulse purchases, um, but they might be slightly rushed purchases. I don't know. We're going to have to just play it by ear. A lot of it will depend on what they have in stock. Um, what's available, how they look, and that sort of thing. The convicts are on sale. I can get convicts for $3 right now. Um, so that's an idea. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. As much as I like mixing it up and having different fish, this guy right here is my Tenopoma acutorostra. And he is just about the coolest fish ever. I love this fish. And the thought across my mind today to get another one and grow it up but believe it or not as big and thick as this one is when they come home from the big chain pet store they are actually so small that that gudgeon would just make a snack out of it um when i got this guy he was actually so small he could have hid behind a postage stamp and now of course he's so thick he couldn't even hide behind a postage stamp he's wider than a postage stamp is but i have considered getting another one of them i actually consider getting another one of my um Catfish, you can't see because he's hiding all in the dense uh, roots right there. But I have a Cynodontus yupteris in this tank, and I really like that one a lot too. And I've considered getting that, but you know, I've already got some of those. I really don't want to add more fish that I've already got in other tanks. That would be silly. Just because I like them doesn't mean I have to like put them in every tank I've got. I've also got the option of various catfish that could go on the bottom and so on and so forth so i don't know give me your thoughts i'd be interested to hear what other people have to say any suggestions on fish that you might think would work i have fairly soft water but i do have about 200 parts per million sodium ions in my water so it's fairly unusual um some things can live in it and some things cannot and some things that are supposed to live in soft water uh, despite my water being soft the additional sodium makes it difficult for some really soft water type animals to live so anything that's like a specialty soft water animal i can't do and then of course anything like an african cichlid that needs the harder water i can't do that either so we'll see thanks for watching this one go ahead and subscribe if you're not already that way you won't miss anything that i do uh wind up doing or putting in this tank i am going to be doing a video here soon of me trying to get that um t-bar out of the t-bar tank and we can have a look at that real quick since we're talking about it uh, that's my brackish tank that's what you keep seeing the glare and the reflection in the tank uh, this is the t-bar tank and you can see what i mean by he's a digger he's pretty much cleaned out this whole corner and he's burying my plants and he's uprooting other plants um, the main thing he's doing is he's harassing my black ghost knife fish and keeping the knife fish um, <clears throat> excuse me a prisoner in the cave uh, the, the knife fish can never come out of that cave system. The moment he does, this T-bar goes after it and just, you know, just pecks at it and picks at it and just chases it right back inside. That uh, does not give it a minute's peace. So that is the main goal is to get him out of here just so that that black ghost can actually have a little bit more um, swimming around time because that will be a neat fish and we will get lots of video of that coming up if I can ever get this T-bar out of here. So look forward to all that coming up in the very near future. Uh, as I said, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. That way you won't miss any of it. If you already subscribed, thanks. And uh, thanks for watching this one again. And I will see you real soon on the next one.